Hi, this is PD at Birds Arcade at birdsarcade.com, and this is tutorial 248. Now, we left off on our last one. We were having a bit of problem with the um, the mob AI. He wasn't returning back to his home. And while the last video was encoding, I went ahead and I did a, a fair amount of tests, and I never got it to break once. So I'm not 100% sure uh, why it wasn't working before. I'm not sure if it's uh, something that happens while I'm encoding. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm just going to try it one more time while I'm recording just to see if uh, it has something to do with that. Uh, we'll switch back. Scale out. There he is. And he's running back. And everything's great. We'll just have to set it up to um, well, stop the finite state machine now. So I'm going to go ahead, drag in my list here, and just take a look here. Uh, so we're going to return to the spawn point. He does that. We don't turn this off yet. And once we turn it off, then we're, that's just automatic. Uh, one thing I want to set here is to set, or put in here is to um, set target to null. And up here during search, I guess we'll check to see if the target is uh, null or not. So let's go ahead and jump back into our script. And I'm going to go up to search. And right before we do this, I'm just going to check to see uh, if target does not equal null. Actually, we're going to check to see if it is null. Uh, we want to do something. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, debug this out. So we'll just say that the target is null. And I'm actually going to log this out as an error. And usually I have this up there but because I'm using the target name up here. I will error otherwise. Uh, let's go ahead and set this to idle. So we're going to set our state equal AI state dot idle uh, so for some reason we're in here and our target is you know, we have nothing targeted uh, we'll go ahead we'll throw it in error and sorry about that I just accidentally hit the mic because I move my hands around when I talk but anyway, we'll go ahead we'll debug out a log error uh, we'll letting the, the person know that their the target is null now we'll go ahead and set the state to idle so it stops it. And I'm also going to come down here. Uh, so we're going to set this to home. So we have to set it up so that when they return home, uh, it, it stops. So the best way to probably do that, uh, if we come down to search, or sorry, yeah, search. Uh, actually, I'm going to do it and decide. Because if he's moving home, I think this is the best spot to actually decide whether or not um, if we should turn off the finite state machine. And basically, when we get within a certain range of the uh, uh, of our spawn point, that's when I want to turn it off. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and move it down uh, into the move section because this is where we're actually moving, and there's quite a bit of cleanup I actually want to do in here. Uh, if you notice, we're calculating a few things twice. Uh, let me see how much time have we gotten by well we've only just started so let's go ahead and actually add the the code that will uh, determine how far away we are from uh from our spawn point and we'll just go from there so first thing we want to do is check to see if we're actually uh, looking at the or if we're actually headed towards our spawn point so we know we're going to want a target and I'm going to come underneath here and just say if target and we'll want to get the name. And if that is equal to uh, spawn point, which we could actually uh, create a a constant for for the string, just so uh, we don't have any typos. Uh, most of the stuff that people send me 
uh, for errors is usually they just spelt something wrong, one of the strings. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take a look just to make sure I am calling them spawn points. And I am. If you're really worried about typos, uh, let's clear all that out. Just come in, uh, copy and paste. There you go. So basically, if we are returning back to a spawn point, I'm just going to quickly throw in a, a debug dot log. And just so I can see it on the screen, I'm actually going to make a log warning. This will show up as yellow. And I'm just going to say returning home. There we go. And now uh, when our mob starts returning home, we should get that message. And we should get that message uh, every iteration through the move. So that's what, every three frames? And one of the nice things about spreading it out over the frames is you don't, you like, sure, it does slow your AI down, but it's not like it slows it down a ton. Uh, as you can see here, we're getting the, the yellow warning one. I'm returning home. Uh, but uh, it kind of stops a little bit of the bottlenecking. I don't think we're actually going to have any here. And of course, he stopped re returning home for some reason. I'm not really sure. I'll have to go through and take a really good look at it, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, like, I, like I, I tested quite a bit when um, I was encoding the last video. So I'm, I'm wondering if I'm just interfering with it with uh, the actual recording. I don't believe so. Uh, let me just return one more time. Okay, well, it's definitely something to take note of and keep watching because he should actually be returning a lot closer. Uh, not quite that close. But anyway, uh, we are getting that message. So let's go ahead and actually start uh, changing a few things around. Uh, we'll move these up top for now. And I actually want to start putting up the distance here. So, um,. Actually, the distance we do down here. So I'm actually going to put that back down here because I don't believe we actually need target position. Nope. So I'm actually just going to cut and paste this up top. And then we'll go ahead and put the distance out down here. I just don't know, just so we know how far away we're, we are from it. And we'll just save that off. And let's go ahead and compare the distance here. Uh, so let me see right here. Um, we'll do it right after the debug statement. We'll just say if uh, the distance uh, is greater than, and we should have some sort of melee distance. And we're probably using it down here, right there. Uh, so basically, if we, once we get within range that we're within melee distance of our spawn point, uh, this is when we're actually going to turn everything off. So we're going to set the state to idle. And of course, we could actually probably just set the target to null. Uh, I think it's in our... Search here. Yes, it checks to see if the target is null. And if it is, it just sets it to idle. So because we actually do have that up there, uh, it's kind of, um, you, you can set it to idle here if you want. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, what you can do is just go ahead and set the target to equal null. Uh, I'm going to just because it's just in my mind, uh, you know, it's something I want to do, but you don't, you know, if you did for some reason omit this line, we do have the line up here to catch it uh, right there. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and test some of this out. So now when it returns, once it gets, once it gets within base melee range of its spawn point, uh, the finite state machine should stop. So let's start it up. Uh, we're going to go ahead 
I'm actually going to turn pause the syncing just so we stop getting that little pop up. And of course that now it's pausing. Okay, but anyway, uh, let's not run through the portal. Let's go ahead. We'll clear this off. Uh, we should get rid of some of the debug statements too, just to clean it up with so we know exactly what's going on. Uh, but anyway, when we get close enough here, uh, it's going to start chasing us, or at least it should. So it's having trouble getting to us. Let's go ahead and turn some of these off just so we can see exactly what's going on. I'm going to leave the move on. Um, so we have search, move, and decide. So I'm actually going to come up and just turn some of these off. I'm going to go ahead and turn off search and decide. I'm just going to leave the move on for now. And we'll go ahead, we'll just start it back up. I'm not really sure if the debug log statements are causing problems or if it's my recording at the same time or uh, because when I was doing the encoding, uh, everything was running fine a while ago. But anyway, so we'll go up here. Uh, it should be moving. And I think it's because we're coming in right from behind. That's a bit of the code I actually want to fix anyway. Uh, so, yeah, sure, it's chasing us. I'll just make sure. Yeah, it's chasing us. So, we'll go ahead, we'll jump in. And we're getting a null mm -hmm. reference here. Uh, so, it wants to return home, and then we get a null reference. So, let's see here. Uh, target position. So, let me see. We're setting the target to null. Oh, sorry. I've got this the wrong way. It should have been less than melee distance. Uh, so what was happening there? What was happening there is we're going ahead and actually setting the target to equal to null. And then when we come down here and try to get the target's position, well, we no longer have anything in target. So that's why we're getting that null error. Simple typo. So I have clear it. Whoops. Let's just keep running. And we'll pop in. Come from the side a bit. There we go. And we just keep running. Uh, there we go. Uh, he's not returning home though. If you notice, uh, it is still uh, debugging out, uh, but the distance is the same. So if we actually went and took a look here. He's just standing there, probably looking at the portal. Uh, if we go ahead and jump through the portal and back through again. And to be honest, I think the problem is the exact same thing. Uh, the code that we're using to have him turn around and uh, face his target, I think, is what's causing the problem. So he's running home now. So we're going to be looking at that code eventually anyway uh, in this little mini series. So I'm actually going to leave it because I think that's actually what the problem is. And if we take a look, he's actually at, uh, let me see, 5.5 the last check. And let's take a look to see what our base melee range is, which is probably up here. I'll shrink some of this down. It's actually at 3.5, so he does stop early. But he is going in the right direction. So let me see. The main thing I wanted to achieve in this uh, little tutorial was to make sure that the finite state machine was actually stopping. Uh, let's just make sure that that is before we end this one. Then we can tackle the next problem in our next tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead, run back up, get him to chase me. I'll come right up from behind. So yeah, that seems to be what the problem is. Is if you come right up behind him, uh, the way we have our turning code. Uh, he can't turn that way. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and clear that off. He is chasing me. Jump through the portal and he can't turn around to get back to a spawn point. Right there. I'm actually going to click him, zoom in. Uh, let's go back into the game. Uh, let's just go manually. Well, not manually turn him, but Get him turned around a bit. There we go. He should be able to run back now. There we go. I'm actually just going to wait till he actually gets all the way there. 
Well, I guess we can actually just run through the portal, take a look. So he's actually stopping. It seems uh, just under, just over five, he seems to be stopping all the time. Um, if I clear, the finite state machine actually is not stopping as well. So I'm actually going to pause it, take a quick look at the code here. And what we're saying down here in the move, um, okay. Well, we're going to tackle this in the next one. What is happening is that we're not actually less than the distance. So we're still trying to tell it to move. And all of our move code is actually down here. And it's being calculated after we check up here. Basically, the changes that we're going to be making down here are going to uh, make this work a little bit better for us. But anyway, we'll tackle that in the next tutorial. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Uh, the sound quality should be a little bit better in this one. Uh, they did actually improve the sound quality in ScreenFlow 3, but um, I'm still having quite a bit of problems with it. Uh, hopefully, they uh, get things working uh, as good as it did during ScreenFlow 2. I kind of wish I could roll back, but I upgraded my license, so my ScreenFlow 2 uh, doesn't work anymore. But anyway, uh, bear with me. Uh, <laughs> they should get it sorted out soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.